Welcome to Chart Rush. In this video, we're tracking the wild evolution of the internet, comparing the world's most popular websites based on their monthly visitors. Our story begins in a quiet Swiss lab. There's only one website in existence, info.cern.ch, created by Tim Berners-Lee, the father of the World Wide Web. Then, the entire internet could fit on a floppy disk, but the calm didn't last. A year later, another digital spark appeared, NCSA, bringing the first browser, Mosaic. For the first time ever, humans could see pictures on a web page. Then, boom, the web exploded like a dial-up modem on steroids. Suddenly, new names started popping up. AOL, Netscape, Yahoo, Webcrawler, Lycos, Excite, and a dozen others all racing to rule this new frontier. It was the wild west of the web, filled with chat rooms, pop-ups, and the eternal sound of, you've got mail. AOL quickly became the giant, ruling inboxes and message boards everywhere. Yahoo tried to bring order to the madness with one of the first search directories, while GeoCities gave people the chance to build their own personal web pages, most of which looked like rainbow explosions with flashing GIFs and dancing babies. But hey, it was the 90s. Aesthetic wasn't invented yet. Meanwhile, MSN joined the race, strutting in with its shiny butterfly logo and promising to make the web feel like part of Windows. Netscape ruled browsers, Lycos fetched information like a digital dog, and Excite tried its best to keep up with the buzz. Everyone wanted a piece of this new digital gold rush. By the late 90s, the internet had gone absolutely wild. What started as a handful of nerds in lab coats was now a global obsession. Millions of visits turned into tens of millions, then hundreds of millions every single month. The world had gone online, and nobody even knew what online really meant yet. AOL ruled the web like a king with a 56k crown. Every, you've got mail, echoed through millions of homes. MSN followed built into every Windows PC, connecting users with chat, mail, and endless loading bars. Yahoo came next, turning search into style with news, horoscopes, and that unforgettable purple touch. And somewhere in the background, a small website selling books appeared, Amazon.com. No one paid much attention at first, just a humble bookstore, with world domination quietly loading in the background. By the year 2000, the internet had turned from a science experiment into a full-blown empire, with billions of clicks, a brand new economy, and enough dot-com dreams to fuel the next big crash. The new millennium began with a bidding frenzy. eBay was exploding, turning everyday people into online hustlers. Meanwhile, the big three, AOL, MSN, and Yahoo, were battling for the crown. Then it happened. Yahoo made history as the first website ever to cross one billion visits per month. That was the internet's first true empire, one homepage to rule the world. But somewhere in a small office in California, something new was quietly taking shape clean white page with nothing but a colorful logo and a blinking cursor. No flashing banners, no pop-up chaos, no, you've got mail. Just peace, silence, and answers. That page was called Google. While other websites were busy screaming for attention, Google whispered, and everyone listened. It loaded faster, looked smarter, and somehow always knew exactly what you were searching for, even if you spelled it wrong. It was like the internet had finally hired a librarian who actually cared. At first, nobody took it seriously. It looked too plain to compete with the giants. But that simplicity was the secret. People loved it. They started skipping the portals, ditching Yahoo, and going straight to the search bar. One search, one click, one, did you mean? At a time, Google began climbing the charts faster than anyone had ever seen. And then, in 2006, it happened. The moment that changed the internet forever. Google overtook Yahoo, claiming the number one spot and officially becoming the world's most visited website. The student had surpassed the master. The web had found its new king, and his name was spelled G-O-O-G-L-E. And just when people thought it couldn't get any crazier, boom, YouTube entered the chat. Now anyone could upload a video, go viral, and become famous overnight. From cat videos to crazy stunts, the world finally had its stage. Then, from a quiet dorm room at Harvard, a new website started spreading through college campuses like Wildfire. It wasn't flashy, it didn't have dancing gifts or background music, just names, faces, and a little blue bar on top. Facebook had arrived. At first, it was exclusive, just students, sharing photos, posts, and relationship statuses that instantly caused drama. But it was clean, addictive, and spreading faster than chain emails from your aunt. Everyone wanted in. It turned social networking into a lifestyle. Scrolling, liking, poking, and refreshing became daily habits. Soon, Facebook wasn't just connecting students, it was connecting the entire planet. People reconnected with old friends, stalked their exes, and discovered the dangerous thrill of accidentally liking a photo from 2011. The internet wasn't just a place you visited anymore. It had become a place you lived in. While Facebook connected the world, Google remained untouchable, the one place everyone visited every day, whether to search, shop, or simply type Google into Google for fun. 
Yahoo was still around, but the glow was fading fast. The new web was faster, smarter, and built for the social generation. Wikipedia had quietly become humanity's brain, or at least the part that could be edited by anyone with Wi-Fi and confidence. Twitter gave everyone a voice, from presidents to parody accounts. And sometimes you couldn't even tell the difference. Over in Microsoft's corner, Live.com kept things tight. Emails, calendars, and clouds all in one neat tab. It wasn't flashy, but it quietly powered millions of daily logins. Meanwhile, Amazon turned shopping into second nature. One click, one box, one addiction. What began as a humble bookstore had become a global empire, where your wallet wept and your delivery driver knew your name. Then came Instagram, and suddenly the internet got beautiful. Every meal, every sunset, every coffee cup, posted, filtered, and hashtag. It wasn't just about connecting anymore, it was about performing. Everyone became their own photographer, influencer, and motivational speaker all at once. In 2016, while the West scrolled through Facebook and Instagram, the East had its own internet empires. Baidu ruled China as the Google of Asia, running search, maps, and news for over a billion users. Yandex dominated Russia, blending search, navigation, and smart services. Two worlds, two webs, one connected, one controlled. Both powerful, both unstoppable. By 2018, the internet had turned into an empire of giants. Google ruled with over 60 billion visits a month, basically the front door to the entire web. Facebook and YouTube were neck and neck, battling for humanity's attention span, while Baidu, Wikipedia, and Twitter held their ground in digital chaos. A year later, in 2019, the game was global. Baidu soared past 9 billion visits, showing how massive China's web had become. Wikipedia stayed the internet's brain, Instagram kept feeding the highlight real lifestyle, and Yandex proved Russia's internet didn't need Google to survive. Then came 2020, and everything changed. The pandemic hit, and the whole planet went online. Work, school, shopping, entertainment, all digital. TikTok exploded, becoming the soundtrack of lockdown life, while Google and YouTube broke every record in history. The internet had officially become humanity's second home. YouTube dominated video, Facebook tried to stay relevant, Instagram evolved into a shopping mall with filters, and TikTok turned creators into overnight celebrities. In 2022, one word defined the web, AI. While social media kept us scrolling, the world started typing something new, chat GPT. Suddenly, the internet wasn't just about consuming information, it was about creating it. From essays to code to poetry, AI became everyone's new assistant, and the future felt closer than ever. By 2023, the web was buzzing like never before. Reddit became the internet's loudest voice, Instagram hit new highs, and X tried to reinvent itself. And just as the dust began to settle, ChatGPT arrived, an AI that could think, write, and talk back. The future had officially joined the chat. The digital world had entered a new era. AI wasn't just a tool anymore, it was part of daily life. ChatGPT skyrocketed into the global top five, standing proudly beside giants like Google, YouTube, and Facebook. People weren't just searching for answers, they were chatting with them. From the simple days of Yahoo and AOL, to the rise of Google, social media, and now artificial intelligence, the web has evolved faster than anyone could imagine. What started as a handful of static pages has become a living, breathing universe, powered by humans, fueled by curiosity, and now guided by AI. This is the story of the internet, from dial-up tones to deep learning. If you enjoyed this digital journey through time, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Which website was your first online obsession? 